80% of what people play on Netflix actually comes from the recommendation algorithm. So it's a really big lever for Netflix. It's a really important part of what we do. Just a general loop of this. And, and I can test this out by if I click on this, and then I click on this, I click on this, Terry Crews, whatever. If I go here to my home page, my homepage will be different because now it will suggest things to me. It's got a recommended list. And recommended is when it starts to think it knows what you want. And that's when things can start going down. Recommender system is everywhere. From Netflix to Amazon to YouTube to any website you can think of. One way or the other, you will see a recommender system. But how these recommendation systems actually work? Let's deep dive. Okay, great. So let's start designing the recommendation system. Okay, great. So let's look at the system design for recommendation system. So before we do that, uh, I think the first thing that I would like to bring up is that there are always templates for how to solve a de uh, system design problem, even for machine learning, right? So first thing that you need to do is to understand the problem. Uh, so ask clarifying questions to the interviewer. Uh, try to under uh, finalize one particular area that you want to focus on and then take the problem from there. Second aspect is to understand the scale and size of the problem. So generally you come up with an estimate in terms of like who, how many users will be using the system, um, how many query per second you will be making, what will be the storage requirement and those kind of things. Third thing is you need to understand the system requirements. So what kind of solution are you building? Are you building a highly available system? Are you building a highly concurrent system? Are you building a highly consistent system? Is it a very reliable system? How, uh, how much focus is on accuracy and other kind of things? Then you talk about one particular design, you give a high level design, like how different building blocks of the system are look like. Then you talk about better design multi with multiple approaches, so you kind of present some, uh, some different approaches that you can think of, bring up with the pros and cons. In the machine learning side, you need to focus on data collection. So you need to identify how you're gonna collect this data, where you'll get this data. So that is one area. Then how much storage is needed to store that data? What kind of features you will use for training? Uh, so basically whether it will be real-time features or it will be offline features or how, what uh, what kind of features you are thinking of using here uh, then you talk about different kind of models like machine learning models once you have identified that you can talk about the machine learning operations side like how you're going to train this model how you're going to scale this model what will be the model metrics that you will use for measuring the performance of this and then how you're going to scale this model these are some of the building blocks for machine learning problem so this is the high level of view. So you have the, in, in terms of recommendation system, you have the user data, you have the product data. So these are the two main entities in the system. So basically your model should basically take this data from the user and the data from product and it will be passed to the recommendation model and then it will create a uh, user rating. So this is the general idea. I have a very basic approach that I start with and it is like a rule based approach. So. So I watched Tom Cruise movies, so the next movie that will be for me will be a next Tom Cruise movie. So this is like a very, very general high level design. Uh, it doesn't work, it doesn't scale, so you can talk about the, the problems with this approach and obviously it's not going to be the focus of the interview. So there are three different aspects of recommendation system. There are three different approaches that you can take. One is the content based recommendation system. Second one is the collaborative filtering and the third one is context uh, filtering. So these are the three uh, machine learning uh, recommendation system approaches. So, so let's look at one by one each of these approaches. So content based filtering, uh, it's basically focuses on the content, right? So what kind of content have you watched? So let's say I watched sleepless movies. So let's start zoom a little bit. Yeah, so I watched sleepless movie and I've watched You Have Got Mail. And these movies are basically honors of already a romance cast Tom Hanks and Mac Ryan. And so according to the algorithm, I will probably watch something of these kind of movies. So it will basically build an, a model that takes these parameters or these features into uh, consideration and recommend me a movie. In this case, it will recommend me Volcano. And this is a content based model. So it doesn't de doesn't talk about the user here. It's more, it's also called, that's why it's also called item to item. Uh, based recommendation system so you only look at the items here and you talk about uh, what is going to be a similar uh, next item so collaborative filtering is a bit different uh, so in collaborative filtering if you look at it here collaborative filtering is more about two main things here collaboration and filtering so the collaboration aspect comes into picture because here now the approach is this so as a user i have watched sleepless 
and I have watched You Have Got Mails. There is also another user who has watched these two movies. So the algorithm, what it will do, or the model, what it will do is build a model from user's fast behavior, such as items purchased previously or rating given to those items. And then it look at other users and recommend you the movie. So I like these two movies and she liked this movie. So the algorithm, will, what it will do is basically decide uh, that, oh, this is very similar taste as uh, this lady. So it's going to recommend me the movie that she has watched, which is basically Volcano and it will be recommended to me. So this is how collaborative filtering works. It's basically both collaborative in the sense that you collaborate uh, with multiple users before making a decision and then filtering is basically filtered out the right content for you. The last one is the context switch filtering. Uh, it's also be higher for movies that we expect the user should be should like so if you feel the user should like these kind of movies it will be higher and that's where you can see the children's are basically more in line towards Shrek and then you create this kind of feature metrics so based on the embedding vectors that you have so you have an embedding vector for 1d embedding for movies you have 1d embedding for users and then you kind of based on what the user has liked previously you kind of create this metric so uh, this person has liked Harry Potter, so it's gonna be a plus here. So that's how you create a feature map for feature matrix for this. Let's look at the collaborative filtering advantages. 
so the big advantage with collaborative filtering is no domain knowledge necessary because you basically are comparing based on the users and you in what other users have like so you don't need to know what is the owner of the movie what is the uh, what is the actors in the movie so you basically don't need any domain knowledge serendipity the model can help us discover new interests in isolation for the ml system may not know the user is interested in a given item but the model might still recommend it because similar users are interested in that item so this is a very important thing so like it can recommend you new items which are not seen by me before but it can still recommend because other users have seen it and it's a great starting point to some extent the system needs only the feedback matrix to train the matrix factorization model in particular the system doesn't need contextual information in particular practice this can be used on as one of the multiple candidate generator so this is a very good uh, starting point for any uh, recommendation system and disadvantages cannot handle fresh items the prediction of the model for a given pair is the dot product of the corresponding embeddings right so if an item is not seen during training the system cannot create an embedding for it it can't create the model for this item this often the issue is often called the cold start problem there are multiple ways to address it we won't dive deeper into like how we can address this uh, actually we can look at it right now projection involves uh, so given an item i uh, i0 not seen in training if the item has a few interaction with the user then the system can easily compute an embedding vector v i0 for this item without having to train the whole model so basically you are just creating a embedding vector for this item the preceding equation corresponds to one iteration in the calls the user embeddings are kept fixed and the system solves for the embedding of an item i0 the same can be done for new user so basically this is how you're gonna create a separate embedding for this item and similarly for the user heuristics for to generate embeddings of fresh item if the system does not have interactions the system can approximate in um, its embedding by averaging the embeddings of items from the same category from the same uploader and so on so it can use some context here to identify what kind of embedding it will lie in and that's what we are trying to do here is to use some heuristics another disadvantage is uh, advantage of collaborative filtering is side features are any features that beyond the query or item id for movie recommendation the side feature might include country or age including available side features improves the quality of the model so in this case we don't recommend any side features right so so the problem here is that let's say if i am if i don't like watch r rated movies because i'm a kid then um even though i like movies which are similar to my interest for an adult person i might won't be able to watch the r rated movies so then what's the point of recommending me those kind of movies right so those kind of things are hard to include as the side features because the model doesn't really care about those uh, aspects so this is the two main problems of uh, collaborative filtering. The last one that I want to talk about is a, a, re a recommendation system using deep neural networks. So there is, um, this is more of a context-based uh, recommendation. So SoftMax uh, distributed neural networks for recommendation, deep neural networks. So it's basically you use SoftMax model for recommendation. Uh, so the input to a deep neural network can include dense features, for example, watch time, time since last watch, spa speech, features like watch history and country. This is more like contextual uh, way. So unlike the matrix factorization approach, you can add side categories such as uh, age or country. So this is the idea here. You are basically supporting the side category. So not just your model is built on the, the item and product pair you can also include side categories because now it's a uh, now it's a deep neural network so you can specify your own features like time and these things right this is how the model architecture determines the complexity and expressivity of